What's going on, guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital, and we're here with Dr. Chris Shaber, Chairman, President, and Chief Executive Officer at Solgenics. Nice to have you on, Chris. How are you doing today? Thank you, Aaron. Nice for having me. A pleasure to be on the show. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So can you start by giving us an introduction to Solgenics and telling us more about the company and what you do? Absolutely. Uh, Solgenics is a publicly traded NASDAQ-listed company. We're currently uh, late clinical stage focused in areas of uh, unmet medical need, rare orphan diseases. I think what makes Sologenics unique is we have two business segments, a what we call a specialized biotherapeutics business segment focused on oncology and inflammation, and a separate public health solutions segment covered entirely and funded in, uh, entirely by the U.S. government uh, to date in excess of $80 million, where we focus on therapeutics and vaccines for civilian and military applications. Wow, that's quite an interesting business. So, you know, let's talk about your exciting most recent news. So the FDA just awarded a $2.6 million grant for the expanded study of Solgenics Hybrite for CTCL. This is very exciting. Can you tell us more about this? Absolutely. It is very exciting. And uh, just maybe a little bit of background. Hybrite is our lead product candidate for the treatment of cutaneous T-cell bone, which is a chronic rare cancer. Uh, where we've uh, achieved a successful phase three clinical study, and we'll be filing a new drug application with the FDA for a potential marketing approval and authorization in the second half of next year. So this orphan grant that you noted, uh, the $2.6 million, was awarded by the FDA, and it's for expanded study of Hybrite, looking at things more real world uh, situations. Uh, so extended treatment of, of Hybrite in that patient population, as well as a transition from the clinical setting to potential home use, which could expand its potential and market. So very exciting and a nice added, uh, I just mentioned the non-dilutive funding element of it mm -hmm. that we get in our organization. So that's a nice added piece that will allow us to do a little bit more work with Hybrite. Yeah, that says a lot that you were able to obtain that. So Solgenics is focused on developing and commercializing products to treat rare diseases, as you mentioned. You know, can you tell us a little bit more about the specific diseases you're targeting and your plan of action? Absolutely. So as I noted earlier, uh, Hybrite is our lead candidate. It's a topical therapy that's applied to cancerous lesions on the skin and cutaneous T-cell lymphoma and then activated with safe, visible light. Uh, so that's our lead uh, candidate. So that's an exciting time for mm -hmm. us. And those not familiar with the drug development process, uh, it's a long one, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. could be as many as long as uh, uh, 10, 12 years. So uh, you first evaluate it in animals and then you go into the clinic and the clinic has phases of study, phase one, two, and three. And with each phase, you're looking and refining your study and protocol and what you're studying in the population each time. Ultimately, the most important phase of study is the phase three study. That's also known as the registration study that you would use to file and be the main element of filing your new drug application with the FDA. So with Hybrate, we've already achieved a positive and successful phase three registration study. So uh, now we're filing that new drug application next quarter. We expect approval in the second half of next year and are preparing also to commercialize that ourselves in the U.S. So that's a pretty important element to us. Uh, also, uh, we have a we've taken the same active ingredient in Hybrite and we're looking at expanded access, looking at it in a different disease, a larger disease called psoriasis. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a phase 2A study starting next quarter as well. We would expect data in that study in the second half of next year. And then in the pipeline, we have a phase 3 ready uh, program for oral mucositis and head and neck cancer, pediatric Crohn's disease, and then that public health solutions business segment. We have a number of heat stabilized vaccine programs in areas like biodefense, ricin toxin exposure, COVID-19, and then Ebola and Marburg. So a pretty robust pipeline that you would typically see for a company our size and market cap. Definitely. So in terms of your clinical trials, can you give us any further updates? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So the good thing is, uh, and if you, if you think about that 
drug development path that I spoke mm-hmm. of, having a successful phase three study, having that data yeah. is very important. And it is a, a significant de-risking measure in the drug development process. Not that it, drug development is not without risk, but with every phase, you're de-risking programs a little bit more, right? And ultimately, that was a significant de-risking uh, for our pipeline and program uh, in cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. So that program is complete. We have all the data. We've uh, had that data published in a very important peer-reviewed journal called JAMA Dermatology. And again, we'll be filing that marketing authorization with the FDA next quarter. Behind that, we have the psoriasis phase 2A study, which will be starting up and we'll open it up for enrollment. We anticipate next quarter and would expect the data there in the second half. And then we have a number of programs, clinical, preclinical that will be occurring over the next, say, six to 18 months across our public health solution segment. So quite a bit of activity. Yeah, there's going to be lots of news for you guys. So when it comes to major catalysts that, you know, investors and prospective shareholders should be looking out for in the near term, what would you say are some of the things that, you know, we'll see happen? Yeah, absolutely. And the nice thing is, if you were to look at our corporate presentation, I actually have a slide that summarizes the potential value drivers. And I really focus on what I can speak about, public, mm-hmm. right? The, the studies, the, the development work we're doing. But when you think about, again, Highbright already having a successful study, we're filing that new drug application next quarter. And then that's moving towards FDA review, uh, hopefully, and, and, and then a potential approval in the second half of next year. Uh, sometime in next year, we'll be also filing in Europe as well for marketing authorization. Mm-hmm. And then, as I noted, we also were preparing to commercialize uh, uh, hybrid incutaneous T cell lymphoma in the United States. Uh, mainly because it's such an orphan, rare, specialized disease. It's very focused uh, with a small number of patients and a small commercial unit to really launch that effectively. And we we plan to launch that, if all goes according to plan, early in the first quarter of of 2024. So that's a key Mm near-term catalyst, the filing of the NDA, as is the initiation of the phase 2A study in psoriasis. And then we have some publication data coming out in public health solutions, but that's what I can talk about, right? Mm-hmm. So what's always going on in the background is that pursuit of non-dilutive funding, like the two point six mm-hmm. million dollar grant we 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 receive. So that's important because we're always active in identifying sources in the non-dilutive funding, and mm-hmm. having received over the last. Uh, uh, 10, 10, 15 years or so in excess of $80 million of non-dilute funding, you know, we're very confident, very active that, uh, that there's more potential funding uh, uh, from government agencies in our future. And then as you would imagine with our pipeline, there's always business development discussions going on. So those are things I cannot prospectively define, mm-hmm. right? It all depends if there's a license uh, yeah. or a partnership at the end of the day, but a lot of activity going on behind uh, you know, the clinical, preclinical studies and the programs that I spoke of today. Exciting times ahead for you guys. So in terms of, you know, biotech in general, we've seen a pretty dramatic pullback in the sector over the last couple of quarters. Of course, the overall market has also taken a beating. Um, it's been very volatile. So can you tell us your thoughts on what might be the next catalyst to move the sector forward, especially for biotech investors? Because there's obviously, you know, high risk, but also really great potential for returns. Absolutely. And, and you pointed it out, Aaron, it's a, it's a very volatile market right now, right? Uh, difficult market conditions. Having been in this business for over 30 years, as you would imagine, I've seen quite, a, uh, quite, quite the ups and downs in the market. And uh, this, I think, what's occurring now is you're having some of that pullback that's occurring because of the volatility, you know, during the COVID-19, when people were focused on the vaccines and and how quickly we were able as as an industry to develop those vaccines and therapeutics to treat COVID-19, I think it built a lot of momentum. And, uh, you know, now there's a little bit of pullback. And as you would imagine, in smaller biotech, where the risk is a little bit higher, 
you know, there's a little bit more pullback there and, and, and uh, contraction. And, you know, so that's why it's important and why I was pointing out the de-risking nature of our pipeline, right? Not only do we have a, a much larger pipeline for a company our size with multiple shots on goal to mitigate risk, a lot of the financial portfolio, but the fact that we are beyond clinical trials with high break, Mm -hmm. uh, and filing a new drug application and having achieved success in the phase three, meeting our primary endpoint, that goes a long way, a significant way to de-risking that asset, right? Not that it's not without risk, but significantly de-risk. So again, when you look at our market cap, our, our stock price currently, which is really in large part due to the current market conditions and how the biotech sex yeah. sector, especially the the small companies are being viewed, I think we're kind of lumped into that. And mm -hmm. I don't think we're being appreciated for the de-risk pipeline that we have and the fact that we've achieved a successful phase three in the study. So um, that's a complete element. But I think you'll see, as you would normally do, the pendulum swing, mm -hmm. right? I think, you know, innovation is very important. And you've pointed out people are going to start to look as the, as the market gets a little bit stronger, start to look for that innovative technology and make investments, especially in smaller companies where the upside is significant, right? And I think uh, we believe Sologenics is, is primed to be one of those companies. We have work to do, there is risk, but a lot of de-risking has gone on over the last several years in our pipeline. Yeah, it's a very interesting market that we're in right now. There's companies like yourselves We've been working so hard, but you know the value isn't reflected in your stock price just yet. But hopefully, good things to come. Now is you know definitely an interesting time to take a look at a company like Solgenics. So, where's the best place for investors to find out more information on the company, or where should they go? Absolutely, the good thing is because we are public, Nasdaq traded under the symbol SNGX. Uh, there's a lot of information out there in the public domain. We do have a lot on our corporate website, solagenics.com, uh, that really uh, covers a lot of information. And then we also have a YouTube channel. So we were focused on kind of getting the message out there with some video interviews like mm -hmm. we're doing here, here today. And that uh, YouTube channel also uh, contains a lot of good information beyond the company representative. So not only company personnel talking about the pipeline, but clinicians, patient advocacy groups talking about diseases like cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, psoriasis, talking about Hybrite. So I think you'll get a lot of different perspectives there uh, for anyone that's interested in learning more about the company, about the disease and about the potential value drivers. Well, thank you so much, Chris. It was a pleasure. Thanks for all the information and uh, best of luck with everything. We'll hopefully have you back on soon. All right. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. If you like these videos, kindly hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications. Drop us a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. And finally, always remember, Departures Capital is for information, education, and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence, and you're making your own personal investment decisions for yourself. This video is not financial advice. Furthermore, this video may or may not have been sponsored by the companies that we've profiled within this video, and we may or may not own shares of any of the profiled companies in this video. If you want to know the full disclosure details, check the description down below along with thoroughly reading our disclaimer. Thanks so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.